In this last recording, we'll put the top and the bottom. We'll use the top image and the bottom image onto this picture frame. So I want you to remember that um, when you're dealing with background properties, let's look at the body where we have this background image. I'm going to actually widen this for you so you can see it easily. You put your color first, then you add your image, then you add your repeat, and then you add your position in that order. So we've got the mid.jpg here. And what I want you to know that as your browser works to parse any images that you put on your background, it wants to see some order. And we know that we're going to add not just the mid image but and a repeat, but also the top image and the bottom image with a repeat. But the color is sort of standing alone. So let's separate the color and put it separately. I'm going to just say background color and paste that in. Save. Now let's talk about adding more images. The first thing to know is that any repeating image should go last. So above the repeating image, we want to put the top image and the bottom image. So I'll start by saying URL. And I'm going to go grab my top image. And I will skip a space. This is the background shortcut, right? I'm going to skip a space and say no repeat. And then instead of a semicolon, I'm going to put a comma because I'm putting commas between images. So now, actually, let me do this for you so you can see everything easily. Here I'll do another URL. And here I'm going to go to add the bottom. And I'll need a comma. So I've got a background shortcut. I've got the top image, a space, and its repeat. I've got the bottom image, a space. I need to do a space and say no repeat. Then a comma. And I've got my bottom image and a space with its repeat. Separately, I've put the background color. Uh, let's save this and see what it looks like. All right, the top is on. It looks like I need some padding there. I can't see the bottom. Oh, yes. <coughs> Excuse me. It's because the bottom, all images by default, their position is top left. So on the bottom image, I need to put left bottom. Let me save that and see if it's in. There it is. So it looks like I need padding on the bottom and on the top. And I would put that on my main. Looks like I already have padding left. So let me put padding top. And oops. And let's see how tall that top image is. It is 182 tall. I don't know if I need that whole thing. Why don't I say 100? W won't hurt if I crop some of it off, right? Where am I? Main padding top, 100 px. And now let's look at padding bottom. We'll do the same thing, 100px, and let's see what that looks like. That looks fine, and that looks fine. The only thing I could show you here is a shortcut for all of these. When you think about the um, value on padding, you need to think about them as looking like a clock. So I'm going to comment these. And a clock goes top, right, bottom, left. So we'll do padding.
top is 100, skip a space, right is 0, oops, bottom is 100, and left is 75, just like a clock. Oh, look, I keep typing no wrong. Let's save that and see if it's the same. Yes. Yes. All right, we've completed this, and I just want to review some of the things you've learned. You've learned a shortcut for this kind of thing, for padding. You've learned shorthand for the background tag in some very important things here. You've learned about class. You've learned about multiple selectors. You've learned about spans. And you've learned about ID tags, the ID attribute. So it's a lot of learning in this one lab. I want to encourage you to play the plate game. All right, have a great week.